What's going on, NBA 2K14 fans? This is Rashidi, your real 2K insider. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the New Orleans Pelicans, their player rating, signature skills, and how we can use this in an online game to our advantage. Uh, the Pelicans are sort of a lower end team in this game, but with the proper uh, technique and understanding of what their strengths are, you can really use any team in this game. So uh, let's get started. Uh, this is using the September 30th roster update provided by 2K Sports. It's the roster that's used in the online game, uh, at least until uh, opening day for the most part. So let's start with the point guards. Uh, you've got Drew Holiday and Brian Roberts. Point guard was a bit of a weakness for this team last year. Uh, Obviously, Holiday and Tyreek Evans are the new additions to this team, and outgoing is Gravis Vasquez, who only had a 73 overall rating, so that's a big improvement for this team, especially at the point guard position. Uh, the, uh, the, Horn the Sorry, not the Hornets. The Pelicans have a number of uh, ball handlers, and they really lacked that in years past. Um, so, with Holiday, uh, he's pretty good score from all areas of the field but where he really stands out is his passing which is a 90 rating and his defense uh, his steal is only a 71 with this little cold streak but he's got a 90 speed 99 stamina so he rarely gets tired 86 defensive awareness and his on ball defense is an 84 which is one of the higher marks out there I believe the average uh, for the posi for the point guard position is a 74. And let's just check that out real quick. On ball defense, okay, 75 is the average, and he's an 84, so that's 10 points above average. Um, the defensive awareness is 13 points above average. So, and the stealing is about average. Uh, he used to have the pickpocket signature skill on the Sixers. Uh, he does not have that this year, so that's one thing to be mindful of. He's very good positionally, but you're not going to get too many, at least not many more steals than average uh, reaching for the ball. So good overall player. Uh, Brian Roberts, on the other hand, is a bit more one-dimensional, as you can see with the 61 overall rating. Really, his calling card is his three-point shooting. He's got the pick-and-roll maestro signature skill but you're not really going to be able to get too much done with that. Uh, he doesn't have the greatest pass rating. It's actually really low. 54, that's really low for a point guard. Not a good defender. His steal rating is even worse than Holiday's. His ball handling is basically the bare minimum rating for a point guard. So uh, really the only thing you're going to be using Roberts for is a three-point specialist until they fix his rating at least. So uh, last year, you actually, well, Austin Rivers started the year out at the point guard position, and really he's a shooting guard in real life, which is where his position is now. You can get away with using him as a point guard if you so desire, because he's got a 96 ball handling rating. So he's easily the best ball handler on this team, and he has the ankle breaker signature skill. So that works out. Uh, his weakness, though, at the point guard position is 42 pass is basically the lowest pass rating you'll find for any point guard uh, in this game. So, you know, he doesn't have that going for him. And you would, you're not going to use him nearly as much as you might have last year, because they added Tyreek Evans, who's listed at small forward, but really he's going to be a shooting guard, small forward um, hybrid this year. But uh, Austin, he's not the greatest scorer. He's only really average from the mid-range and three-point. Uh, very good dunker in this game. He only dunked once last year, and he's not really an athletic player like that. So I'm I'm hope I'm personally hopeful that 2K drops that substantially because he you know Austin Rivers is like he was he was actually one of the least effective he was the, one of the probably the worst player in the NBA last year and 2K fans actually know him as being relatively effective because you can cross people over and dunk with him uh, pretty easily if you put your mind to it and that's just not his game in real life. 
he's going to be better this year than he was last year, but I'm he's never going to be that kind of guy who just throws it down on you, especially in the half court. Uh, Eric Gordon, you'll notice, uh, also has a similar dunk rating, better shooting ratings, and uh, while his ball handling isn't as good as Austin Rivers, you can get by with him at the point guard spot in a pinch. Again, Brian Roberts only has an 80 ball handle rating, and Gordon has a 78, so you may want to consider using Gordon over Roberts at the position. He's got a 90 speed, which is also very good. Uh, that's great for a shooting guard, so you can get out on the break with him a little bit, take advantage of that 80 dunk rating. And he's actually a pretty good defender as well. Um, that being said, he is a prime candidate to get his ratings decreased in the future because he didn't perform well last year. And with Tyreek Evans now in the fold, it makes sense that one of these guys is going to get a few retouches. And Gordon seems pretty likely. He hasn't even played this preseason yet. And it just doesn't seem that his future is with the team. He doesn't seem like he wants to be there. And he's very injury prone. So the recipe for, for him maintaining... Uh, his 83 overall rating, which I believe is well, it's second highest on the team now because we have Drew Holiday with an 88, which is um, higher than Tony Parker, which is kind of absurd. But that's a different topic for another day. Uh, <laughs> so you've got Gordon. Uh, you would think that the he was a little bit better last year. His three-point rating was higher. Now it's um, probably only like a 78 when you take away this cold streak. With the cold streak, it's only a 75, so that's pretty much average. You're not going to be shooting as much from distance as with Gordon as you normally would. Uh, I would definitely uh, recommend Anthony Morrow if you were going to go with the three-point route because look at those. That mid-range game is really good, and he's also very good from distance. He he had two or three signature skills last year, which he does not have, so he's not going to be as effective as he was last year. But he makes a pretty good uh, shooting guard, small forward. Outside shooting is always welcome in 2K. Uh, I would be concerned this year about putting him at small forward because with the 29 defensive rebound rating, uh, he's going to get horsed by a lot of uh, wings down low. But overall, um, you know, he, he does have some limitations. Defensively, he's awful. 43 defensive awareness. But, you know, he's, he's kind of caught between positions. Uh, he doesn't have the ball handling ability of your typical two guard. At a 66, that's really low for a two guard. And he's not big enough to play small forward. So you don't want to give him too many minutes unless you really need that three point shooting. So, yeah, there's not really too much to say about him aside from three point specialist, uh, which you already have with Roberts at the point guard spot. The difference being Morrow's a much better shooter overall from the mid range. 60 65 close and mid versus 88s around for Morrow. So uh, you might want to think about using, say, Gordon as your backup point guard, and that way you can use Morrow as your shooting guard because then you <coughs> you uh, you're not losing the uh, you're not losing any ball handling ability because they're equal ball handlers and you're still getting the three point shooting ability. So Tyreek Evans, uh, I had some success with him in my previous stream, using him as a point forward off the bench. He's going to be the sixth man in real life. Um, very mediocre from the mid-range, but he's a great finisher with a 95 inside shot rating, uh, 92 layup, and the 65 dunk is pretty good for a two guard. Uh, he can play any of the perimeter spots. Really good overall uh, ball handling and passing. And his block steals and rebounds are uh, pretty solid for a two guard. You can get away with using him at the three. He's just a very overall well-rounded player. With that said, uh, I don't think he plays very well next to Drew Holiday and Eric Gordon because all three of those guys are ball handlers and not too strong in the outside shooting department, especially with this cold streak of 75 three-point because now you've got Gordon also with a 75 three-point, and Holiday's only got a 79 three-point. So you're going to be very weak on the uh, in three-point shooting with all three of those guys on the floor. 
and they don't really uh, differ too much in terms of skill set. They're very ball dominant players, so I'd recommend keeping Tyreek as the six man, or maybe making Gordon the six man. One of those two, you really shouldn't be carrying both in the lineup at the same time, and that'll give you uh, you can spread the floor more with a guy like Morrow. Um, the starter in real life is Alfaro Camino, who's a 52 three point and you're obviously not going to be shooting at all with him. He's a very good finisher with the 80 dunk, and what he's actually known for is his rebounding. Uh, he's easily the best defensive rebounder among non-big men in the NBA. Uh, with this hot streak he thing he's got going on, 78 and 89 for the rebound ratings, that's, that's, power for, that's not even power forward quality, that's center quality. So... Uh, you know, you can get away with using him for help on the glass as a slashing uh, small forward, or you can put him at the power forward spot and really take advantage of the transition game because then you've got a guy with those rebound ratings and an 81 speed. So you're not going to lose too much in size, but you are going to be able to take advantage on the break because most power forwards top out at, uh, at 70 speed. There's very few who uh, are even close to a 70. A lot of them are kind of hovering around the 60. Um, and he's also a pretty good perimeter defender. So that's really how you'd be using Aminu as strictly as a slasher, never shoot outside shots with him, and kind of treat him as a, I, I wouldn't say a stretch four, but a swing four. You know, he can play either position as needed. Uh, Darius Miller very one-dimensional in this game. He's got the three-point shot, and this might be the 99 free throw rating, the most absurd rating that I've ever seen in a 2K game, and that's saying a lot, because there have been some pretty bad ones. So, 99 free throw. How did he get a 99 free throw rating from 2K Sports? Uh, career stats. Oh, he's, he's never missed a free throw in his career. Oh, well, that's great. How many did he take? Oh, eight. He was eight for eight in his career, in his NBA career, in 700 minutes. So he's taking like one free throw per hundred minutes of gameplay. And they felt the need to make him a 99 in the free throw rating, discounting Everything that he did in college that suggests that he's not the greatest free throw shooter of all time. Um, not that this is, to put it lightly, retarded. And, you know, fortunately, he's not on the active roster. He's actually injured in real life, so it works out. Um, if once he gets healthy, and if he gets put on the active roster in online, you'd be able to use him at the end of games when you you know when you're playing the free throw game, and all of a sudden you've got a guy who can't miss free throws. I mean, you can miss free throws, but you know if your timing your timing doesn't have to be perfect. You know you can have a slightly late or slightly early, and 99% of the time it's going to go in because he has a 99 free throw rating. So. That's something, that's a very glaringly bad mistake, and uh, it's definitely something that 2K Sports should get taken care of in their rosters. And I made this note today, you know, 2K now is starting to come out with the next-gen uh, information now that they suckered everybody into buying uh, the current-gen NBA 2K14. If they can't get the current rosters and ratings right on the current-gen, what makes you think they're going to get it right on the next gen? Because, I mean, aren't they going to be using these same numbers for online, for for, uh, for next gen? You know, is Darius Miller suddenly going to have a normal free throw rating when we get to next gen? No, he's going to have, they're going to be using the same data from the current gen that they are in the next gen. So, you, you know, 2K wants to talk a big game about you know all the all these advancements that's all these advancements that they're making but at the end of the day when they've got game breaking stuff like a 99 free throw rating on a random guy who barely plays it, you know it definitely calls into question 
uh, their credibility on a lot of stuff. So that's my little spiel. Uh, let's get back to uh, the Pelicans ratings and strategy, because I'm sure I'm sure that's what most of you are here for, not to hear me rant about what 2K's got to do for the next generation. Although it does, there are some uh, important questions there. Lance Thompson Thomas is uh, more or less the same as uh, same style as Aminu, and uh, not really Darius Miller. Closer to Aminu, he's a power forward playing out of position at small forward. A uh, good offensive rebounder, not so much defensive. Uh, pretty good speed for, really, he's a primary power forward, and I would use him as such. He doesn't really have the perimeter skills to play uh, small forward. In fact, uh, he was a power forward in the 2K13. I don't know why they changed his position, but he rates at uh, one point higher, whatever. He's just a scrub all around. Um, obviously, with a 30-rated three-point shot, you don't want to use him on the wing. I would basically ignore him. Uh, in, for online purposes, because you're going to get the same exact stuff from him that you would Aminu. He's a poor man's Aminu in this game. So don't bother too much with him. Uh, the only reason you might need to is the Pelicans are very thin up front. They've only got Anthony Davis and Ryan Anderson to power forward, and they've got three stiffs at center. And you're probably going to want to use Anthony Davis and Ryan Anderson together so to do that, you would have to put Davis at center or Anderson at small forward, um, which again means you don't have too many power forwards. This is why I do advocate using Aminu at power forward when you can. Uh, so Anthony Davis is the star of this team. He's only got a 79 overall rating, but that will go up this year. He's been dominating the preseason, uh, averaging something like 23 and 10, I think, in the preseason. So that's good. Um, he's a very good rebounder and defensive player with the blocks and steals. He wasn't a good... Uh, his awareness was not great in real life last year, but he has an 85 defensive awareness in the game. So he's definitely your most valuable defensive player. Uh, with 70 speed, again, that's very rare for a big man. So he's going to be faster than a lot of them. You can get out on the break a little bit. And if you move him to the center position, that's even you know, even better for, uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, even with the 70 on ball defense, that's also, again, really good for a big man. He can get, defend a lot of different players. You don't want to take too many outside shots with him. That was a weakness for him. Uh, very good finisher. He's more or less, uh, a, I would say, a more versatile Tyson Chandler type. He's got finisher, eraser, and hustle points. And that pretty much defines uh, who Anthony Davis is as a person. Uh, he's got a really good ball handling rating, and he's his post-offense rating is much better than a guy like Tyson Chandler's. But essentially, you're going to want to use him the same way as uh, a rim-defending, offensive-rebounding dunk specialist, you know, who's... Uh, uh, especially on the pick and roll, you've got all these ball handlers on the team. You know, use them. You know, take advantage of the pick and roll with a with an athlete like Anthony Davis. And conversely, you also have uh, Ryan Anderson, who's uh, one of the best three point shooting big men in the league, if not the best. And that offers a completely different look from Anthony Davis, who's you know the athlete without shooting ability. Anderson's a three point shooter, not so great for mid range. In fact, awful for mid-range, but very good three-point shooting for the power forward position. His overall rating is very deceiving. He's a much better player in real life than this rating suggests. Part of the problem is, or I should say the main uh, problem is, 2K has no idea how valuable three-point shooting is to the power forwards, uh, to a real-life power forwards rating. If we took Ryan Anderson's three-point shooting away from him completely, he would not be in the NBA. And yet, we see only a one-point overall difference. This is a guy who's a legitimate six-man of the year candidate every year. And if we took, because of his three-point shooting, and if we took away that facet of his game from him completely, 2K says that there wouldn't be any difference. And this is one of the problems with why Dirk Nowitzki's rating has been so low for years, is 
2K thinks that shooting ability is not important for a power forward when in fact, especially over the last five to 10 years, it absolutely has become important for a power forward. You know, stretching the floor is, is, is such a vital part of the current NBA game and they just don't account for it at all. And that's why you have a guy like Ryan Anderson, who's obviously a much better player than, say, uh, Al Farouk Aminu for one, Austin Rivers for two, you know, Ryan Anderson or Anthony Morrow, nobody's going to, that's not a toss-up for anybody. Obviously, it's Ryan Anderson. So don't be deceived by um, by his overall rating. He's obviously very uh, valuable to what you're going to be doing with this team. Uh, he's a good offensive rebounder and limited in the post, but that three-point shooting is is really key. So, uh, really quick, I just want to check his handle rating, because I'm actually not sure offhand what it is. 35. So, I really wouldn't use him as a small forward unless you're thinking of using him like, you know, teams use Steve Novak, um at small forward, and his handle rating's no better, and he's a 53 overall, Steve Novak is. So, you could use him in, on the wing, but there are just so many other options on the perimeter that I wouldn't really bother with uh, with Anderson as a 3, and I just stick with him at the 4. Um, at center, we've got three stiffs. And that's another thing, is because you're so uh, untalented up front, I, you really do need Anderson up front to take advantage of his offensive rebounding ability because there's not too many other guys on the team that you can use at the power forward and center spot. You've got Steamsma, Jason Smith, and Jeff Withy, all of whom, for the most part, are stiffs. Uh, they're great shot blockers, Steamsma being the best one. Uh, he's got the eraser signature skill also. Uh, so does Jeff Withy at a 79 block rating. Uh, Steams all is just in general a very good defensive player because he has a good steal rating. But all of them are very slow with mid 40 speed. Uh, they're not very good rebounders, which is why, again, bringing up Aminos and his, his currently 89 defensive rebound rating. Uh, and what's Davis? 84. So Amin is the best rebounder on this team. Definitely use him at the four spot. You're not going to get too much rebounding from your center position. Uh, that's something to be mindful of when you have Ryan Anderson in the game because he only has a 58 defensive rebound rating. So I would say uh, pairing up Anderson and Steamsmo would probably be a good idea. Uh, not so much Jason. Well, I mean, really all these guys, it's kind of the same thing. It's not like an eight-point difference in defensive rebound rating is going to make or break your day. Um but Steam Smith is the best defensively in this group. Uh, Smith is the best offensively. He's got a, he's got the screen outlet uh, signature skill uh, and a very good uh, mid-range shot. So you can use him in the pick and roll. And he's a pretty good finisher with the 88 inside and 61 dunk. Withy is a good dunker at 72 dunk. Uh, but the rest of his shooting ratings aren't really uh, up to snuff. I would say he's yeah he's not an outside shooter at all. Uh, Steamsma has a good uh, mid-range shot, so those two guys you can use them in the pick and pop. Oh, Smith even also has the brick wall signature skill, as does Steamsma. So again, uh, use your big men for pick and rolls. Don't ever post up with them. This is one of the worst uh, post up teams in the NBA. One thing that you do need to be noteful of is, uh, oh, geez, uh, Jason Smith has a, he's much better than his rating in real life, and it's because of stuff like this, a 34 defensive awareness. There's no way he's that bad. Um, that's one of those ratings that they really need to fix, and uh, be mindful of that, obviously, when you put him on the court, but I would say, uh, yeah, pick and run, run pick and rolls and don't post up. Where is post-up rating for your whole team? Yeah, Davis is your best post-up player at a 68. So this is not uh, something you're going to want to be doing 
with your team at all. In fact, Drew Holiday ranks as uh, if you're going to post up, do it with Drew Holiday because then you're you're going up against uh, point guards who have uh, low post defense ratings. You might have some actual success there. So anywho, let's get into an online game and apply the stuff that we talked about. Oh, that was the other thing that I was thinking of um, when I got a little sidetracked. Their stamina ratings of the centers are all very low, so you're going to have to be subbing them in uh, in and out quite a bit. You kind of got a little bit of a three-headed monster here like the Bulls did in the mid-90s with Longley Wennington and then uh, whatever random uh, veteran third stringer they could pick up. So we're hopefully getting synchronized into this game. Uh, never mind. Let's back out because too laggy. Mank Millie 4. I, sometimes I wonder where people get their there are gamer tags. It's pretty obvious where I got mine. All right. And he's going to pick the Knicks. Fantastic. Our opponent is a Knicks fan. All his games come with the Knicks. So let's see what kind of cheese lineup he puts forth. Mellow's at power forward and J.R. Smith's at the three. So I am going to use Tyreek as my uh, six man. And Aminu is athletic enough to keep up with J.R. Smith. And when we bring in Tyreek, uh, that'll help as well because J.R. will be tired by then. And it's the Pelicans in New Orleans for a little interconference action at New Orleans. And Davis and Mello, I'm not too worried about that matchup right now because, again, Davis has a good on-ball defense rating for a big man, and as well as a good speed rating. And he's got the length and the defensive chops. Hi everyone, this is Kevin Harlan alongside so, Clark Kellogg. He obviously is much better rebounder than so that. Right here on 2K advantage. Sports. A quick check now at the starting lineups for both teams. And guys, what do you think we'll be seeing from Greg Steamsman this one? Yeah, and one of the things he gives them at the offensive end, Kevin, is somebody who sets the toughest screens in the league. He is really hard to get around as a defender. And another thing he's known for all over the league is what an angry shot blocker he is. He does it with an attitude when he knocks it out of the I hate air this. and sends it behind the shoe. needs to fix this so Take much. a look at New York. Well, they've cemented their status over the course of the year as one of the elite teams in the NBA. They've done everything that was expected of them over the course of the season, and they've really got it rolling. Yeah, you know, Steve, that success, though, can be like a vapor and go up in smoke, especially if they don't have the same success in the upcoming postseason. They've set the bar very high for themselves, guys. Davis with a screen on felt. And Davis, here we go. This is a two amino. Pocket six. New Orleans needs to get off a shot. Offensive rebound. Here's Davis. And it's blocked by Anthony. It's a little bit of paint pounding. By Here's Shumpert. Yes, and it's Smith with the assist that time. Shumpert's Whoa. got the game going with his first points of the game for New York. It's been uh, two days since I Pelicans played. Pelicans so. ended up being the name that New Orleans chose when it was all shake out my rust. And I like the new look uniforms, but they had some other options as well that sounded pretty good to me. How about the brass? He's going to double Because me. it gives hey. nod to the music that New Orleans is popularized. Now they're That's not showing not too much respect for him defensively, ever. are they? Uh, and now Doris double double Burke has post. an update from the sidelines. Well, Mike Woodson gave me a moment to catch up with him. Going 
into this game and scouting the opposition, he told me he's a huge Four, fan of Drew numbers, Holiday, Alley saying, you know, Drew's still a guy with oh, so much potential. You just don't see that many point guards with his kind of frame. Six foot four, close to two bills, and a great skill set to match. I wish was smarter in that regard. He's a guy you love to watch, but I you often hate to, to go up against. Davis. Kevin, we'll see if he can have a big impact in this one. Thanks, Doris. Well, definitely a nice sounding name. Other options were the Swamp Dogs, the Bull Sharks, the Mosquitoes. Uh, you know, Steve, all in all, you have to think they went uh, the right way with the Pelicans. I don't know. My personal favorite was the Rougarou. <laughs> um, that, I don't even know what that means, but that was in the mix. Would have puzzled a lot of other people around the country besides me. But uh, better than Mosquitoes, that's for sure. Pelicans was probably the right way. That's good. And one, there's a whistle that goes on a Monday. have right now is... That's his first foul. Uh, first I like the call. I thought the game. defense was moving there. Yeah, I think he slid underneath. Good blocking call, that trip. Davis kicks to Holland. Certainly not the dream start they were hoping for, going one for four early. So, and the Pelicans the miss again. Tyreek Evans. Well, what you love about Drew Holiday is his strong body, his size at the point guard position. He's about 6'4". Still very young, but an all-star last year. I think he's only going to get better. Aminu with it. Now Smith defending. Oh, for three, Gordon. And the rejection by Shumpert. Right kind of a shaky first few minutes. This guy's five field goal attempts, only one made. Man, a gaping hole in well, the defense Morrow that time. Well. And he didn't waste any time getting through it. And, you know, Drew Holiday, guys, in Philly is called by some people the truth. <laughs> but he still has work to do. I like his talent and his demeanor. He's developing as both a scorer and a playmaker, which is tough for a young player to balance those like two that. skills. There was no but I think on he's that got a chance to be special. I'm not sure. Well, yeah. I, I was expecting a pick and roll when I wow, took that. And that sort of showmanship is just deflating right now to a team trying Clark to get back into this game like this. Yeah, definitely a jam with emphasis. A big apostrophe or exclamation point. How about maybe even a question mark, Clark? Yeah. Well, you know what the questions are about now. It's their defense, that's for sure. This touch has disappeared on him this quarter. He just hasn't been able to get it going. And here's that's Anthony for three. Chandler, the pass to Felton. Out to Anthony. The pass to Smith. Backcourt. Outside jumper. Chandler. Do not double Tyson Chandler in the, the post, around. computer. Took the opportunity when he uh. saw it. Felton's got his second bucket tonight. I like the offensive awareness to exploit that lack of coverage on that play. Smith with it. Al Farouk Amino covering. The drive by Smith. Chandler's shot. Good. That's overall very Chandler's got his first points of the night. And a look at how the hustle game has been going for New York. Well, I think the defensive aggressiveness on this player has caught him off guard. Playing airtight defense and coming up with the steal. Yeah, it sure has. And another area where they've been on point is defending the rim. Guys, a All right, lot of block shots murdered. through the first the two moment. quarters. Well, they've settled into their offense very quickly here today. Yeah, they're zoned in, making the most out of their possessions here. A lot of high hopes for the Knicks in last year's playoffs. They started off so hot, but then let the series against Boston drag on and on and eventually went to seven games, and they fell to the Pacers in the second round after that. Outside jumper. Pass to Felton. Back to Shumpert. He dishes it to Carmelo. Outside for Felton. J.R. Smith on the wing. And a miss there on the triple. And the Boston series did drag on him, you could tell. You wonder if they were a bit fatigued going into that Pacers series. Steve Indiana right. just outplayed him, outworked him, and in every way in the second game. round. Yeah, I think it was a factor, Kevin, the, and really the Knicks have only themselves to blame. They had Boston well, down 3-1 and a home game to close it out, but they couldn't get it done. And there's no doubt that that affected them against Indiana in the next series. Boy, what a fantastic opening quarter for them. Yeah, it sure has been. Look at the lead they've jumped out to already. Impressive. And Holiday kicks to Gordon. Pass to Davis. 
How's that for an answer? Like that with the dunk. Well, as far as the defense goes, Clark, that is not what's going to keep them in this league. Yeah, but from the other perspective, you can right, see just how 11. much that dunk pumped those players up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree, guys. I sense a little bit of a momentum shift here. The first quarter concludes. Well, not exactly a close game so far, but as the second quarter starts here, plenty of time for a comeback. And uh, the Knicks, guys, have been rolling right along here, haven't they? And how about the defense, guys? They have really controlled the lane with their shot blocking. Yeah, excellent defense there. Every shot has either been altered or rejected. Here are the five New York has to start here in the second. We've got Hardaway. World Peace is out there with Bargnani. And it's Udrich, and it's Martin, and at the center, filling out the middle. Nice shot by Evans. For the New York Knicks, they come into this one following a loss to the Celtics in Boston. Yeah, I thought their defense in that game was about as shaky as it could be. At home, you know, that kind of defense isn't going to cut it, never mind if you're on the road. They really look tired to me, and I don't know if they had travel issues nah, or if they the were out too late, but something was amiss because they had no energy. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Right, I wish Tyreek would stop running. Well, court, Kevin, although Andre Bargnani is a player that had seemed to have lost a lot of value around the league, the Knicks were actually eager to acquire him this offseason, despite the money remaining on his contract. And Tyreke you can see fashion. the fit. A team that loves to spread the floor and shoot threes, he can certainly do that. And gives the team another versatile scorer to complement the brilliant Carmelo Anthony. Kevin, we'll see how it works out. Seems like a good fit. Thanks, Doris. Another season and another drop in the numbers from Tyreek Evans, including his minutes. But if you look at his percentages, he's the most efficient scoring of his career so far. A lot has been said about him slumping since his historic 25-5 and five rookie season, but fans should be encouraged by how he played. And so New York calls timeout. They're first. And for Tyreek Evans, a player who's had the ball in his hands his whole life, it's had to, you know, be a tough adjustment learning to play off the ball. Yeah, I think that's been the big challenge. And he's not a great shooter, so players who are used to handling the ball and don't shoot particularly well, now all of a sudden it's a really big adjustment trying to figure out that new position. So New York ends up going with the new group. Let's check out the standings in the Western Conference and see how the playoff race is shaping up. Taking a look at Oklahoma City and checking out New Orleans. They're tied right now. You can't be the number two seed in the East by being mediocre on the road. I mean, the Knicks had a veteran group, and they all had the mental fortitude and experience to finish off games on the road last season. Dalton gets to jump. Out to Anthony. It's a nice passing by New York here. New York, no good that time either. What? And out of bounds as the Knicks gain possession. Here now, a very select group of players yeah, in the NBA. Sucks. Big men who can step away from the bucket and hit the three. Got to stop. Get Anderson. It's going the other way. Dangerous player from three-point land. A great talent with a great release. It's amazing. These days, there's just so many good... Outside shooting big men. That didn't used to be the case in the NBA. But now the floor is spread all over the place because you've got so many big-time shooters at that four and five spot. Yeah, you make a good point there, Steve. Big guy uh, shooting the ball well. It's part and parcel of the game pass. now. When you go back a generation, there are only a fraction of big men who can knock down outside shots like we're seeing currently. And now the Knicks on the break. Felton with the ball. Now guarded by Morrow. Felton kicks to Chandler. He's against Smith. Smith left side. Six to shoot. The shot from the low post is good. And the Knicks lead by 15. Clark, as you said, the Knicks were one of the tougher teams on the road, and their road record was, you know what, uh, separated them, Steve, from the middle of the pack in the East. Yeah, 23 road wins, second only to the Heat in the East. It was interesting, Kevin. They relied so heavily on threes that you know, sometimes on the road they'd go cold, but they could also get hot in a hurry, and they were able to avoid a, a bad spell. Felton, the finger roll finish at the bucket. 
Felton's got seven points. The soft finger roll is just one of the many finishing moves he has in his bag of shot making. Smith sets the pick for Evans. Pass to Smith. Inside. Here's Anderson. He feeds it to Morrow. And another three for New Orleans. Quick release, he's though, found a rhythm he's here a, in this oh, second quarter. Shot. He good. Felton goes in. Gets it to go. Nine points in the game so far. Those defenders look like they're out of gas. I mean, they're getting pushed around on the low block. Well, their energy is lacking. And they've got to start playing harder and battle down in the paint. Evans off the pick from Smith. Evans dishes to Morrow. Kicks to Smith. Shot from 16. Rebound by Smith. And it is very dangerous to leave him open like that. Lucky break for the defense that he missed it. What's interesting for me to watch with Mike Woodson as head coach in New York is the exciting floor spacing offense they started playing last season. In Atlanta, he'd been known for a grinded out isolation play style, but has actually tweaked his approach a little bit. And that's been impressive. Evans working against oh, Anthony. On. It's stolen that's by to go to Anderson. Jumper. And he jams it with authority. You can't trust TK. And once he took the, off, uh, it looked like the passing. defense just had no Without interest in getting passing. in his way. That's one where you just give up the two points and move on. It's so frustrating. And back to Mike Woodson, not a flashier, high-maintenance type of personality. He keeps it on the level, and I think, Steve, the players appreciate that. Players definitely like that. He's uh, very quiet on the sidelines, but not afraid to get in your face when necessary. And I think that's a, a really good temperament for a coach to have. In general, I, I think he's a guy who is very well respected around the league and he did an excellent job with New York a season ago. Time call here. Knicks decide to talk it over. And going against New Orleans, their first game of the NBA's regular season. Last season, they had a very easy time with this club. And, of course, being East versus West, they only got to face them twice. But I'm sure they wish they had them on the schedule more often. So New York going with almost an entire new group here. Stoudemire's checked in for Jamie. it now. Don't worry. I've come back comes for in us. for J.R. Smith. Hardaway's checked in for Shumper. And it's Udrick in for Raymond Felton. 55 seconds left in the second quarter. Steve yep, was talking before we got to that little segment there about so it playing them on. It was two games last year, two wins. Okay. It's probably a safe assumption. They've got a lot of confidence heading into this first meeting, Mark, uh, this year. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, they appear to be at opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of talent. But nothing's ever a sure thing, Kevin. That's why we play the game. I like that. Good. You know, playing in London during the 2012 summer seemed to do wonders for Melo. It often does wonders for guys that play with that national team. He came back with all kinds of confidence and uh, seemed to be at another level. He's perfect from the line this time. And for Carmelo, boy, he really excels in international as he always has. Yeah, the three-point line is just a bit shorter, which kind of brings it right into his comfort zone. So he can play that zone buster role for Team USA. And tell you what, he can do so many other things, too, because of his size and quickness. And here his coaches talk about his defense is better than they expected, too. Ironic, isn't it? It's very Well, probably the right play defensively. If you can't get the block, send them to the free throw line. Don't give them an easy two. No easy buckets inside. Force free throws and work to keep them out of the lane next time around. Good on the second free throw. We've got 13 seconds left now here on the second. Here's Hudrick. Back to Anthony. Puts up a three. No good on that last second attempt there. And so that's the end of the first half. All right, could have been it's worse. The uh, we are playing the Knicks, who are an elite team in this game. It's nine threes. Well, we're getting back to the end. Now it's been a one team show been so a lot far. Worse. We'll see if that those. changes here in the third. What a game we're seeing from Marley. Boy, he put on a show from the three point line in the first half, didn't he? We'll see if the halftime break had any cooling effect on him. Yeah, we'll soon find out because I guarantee they're going to keep feeding it to him behind the arc. Until he does cool. air by me. Backcourt, Holiday and Gordon. Anthony Davis is out there with Aminu, and it's Morrow in at the small forward position. So that's the group out there for New Orleans. 
Back to Felton. He kicks it to Smith. Outside Anthony. The feed to Chandler. Shot clock at six. It's tipped and stolen by Gordon. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to Doris Burke for an update. Hi, Doris. Oh, I let him well, throw guys, the foul. Andrea Bargnani, the number one overall pick back in 2006, but he hasn't been a star caliber player in the NBA. Injuries have played a role, certainly, but his defense and rebounding have been the biggest problems. A former coach of his with the Raptors said it just didn't seem like he had enough passion for the game that it wasn't important enough to him. Some pretty harsh words, but guys, sometimes for seven-footers, the game finds them. And defense and rebounding, certainly not the glamorous parts of this game. Kevin will see if he ever realizes his potential. And hope for the best. Thanks, Doris. Well, you got to help out the team whenever you can, and this group of shooting guards have helped out on the glass for their respective teams this year. In the third spot, J.R. Smith. And these are sort of your do-it-all guys. You know, even if rebounding isn't necessarily a priority for shooting guards, it's still an important skill to have. Yeah, I agree with you. As much that as you can do to help your team, you increase your value and your importance. And the guys on this list fouls. give their team a huge boost with their ability to squeeze the arm. Well, most of all, I just love the work he puts in on the offensive glass. So many of his points come on putbacks just because of Credit sheer hustle. And Steve, very few players have his finishing ability. We see him get a lot of and ones because even if he draws hard contact, he is able to play through that and typically score. Shumpert passes to Felton. Hands it from downtown. Felton has got 12 the in the game. Davis is really Pelicans uh, last season like were dead last so. in steals, guys. And you would think with a defensive anchor like Anthony Davis inside, they'd feel more comfortable pressuring the passing lanes, but it just didn't seem to be the case for him. Chandler comes with the double team. Holiday with the three. Tyson Chandler pulls it in. Chandler's got four rebounds now tonight. Felton kicks to Shumper. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. And Clark, as you said, with the Van Hornets, now Pelicans, last in the league a year ago in steals per game. And Steve, overall defensively, they just struggled mightily. Yeah, third worst defense in the league last year. They allowed a lot of open threes on the perimeter. Some of that is just, you know, the young team and going through the growing pains. But I, I think, uh, you know, with the shot blockers inside, you have to apply more pressure on the perimeter. And that's why they went out and got some of the guys they did. Terrific defense at the rim. They got right in his path. You know, that's part of what great defenders do. They get not only in your path, but in your head a little bit, too. And here's Felton from the arc. It's rebounded by New Orleans. They are coming off that win against Atlanta. And I think everybody uh, who was at that game would agree. It, it was their defense that really won it for them. Yeah, they were all over the place, flying all over the court on deep. The kind of hustle that pays off big time for you. And the offense continues to struggle. Just one make in their five attempts. Well, guys, with the Knicks playing a space-the-floor pick-and-roll offensive scheme, I mean, Tyson Chandler is a hand-in-glove fit as, as the high-flying finisher inside, keeping defenses honest and then cleaning up the mess on the weak side board if shots are missed. And it's Shumpert penetrating. Smith defended by Gordon. Oh, and here's away Anthony from for three. Yes, and it's Smith with the uh, assist. Dates are caught in a screen animation. Smith's got three assists tonight. And Holiday kicks to Aminu. Gordon feeds to Davis. Taken away by Anthony. Entry pass. I hate when they do that. J.R. Smith on the wing. He's covered by Aminu. And Clark, you talked about what Chandler has meant for this Knicks team, both on the court and in the locker room. And you wonder, you know, if Dallas, Steve had it to do over him, do you think they would have tried harder to resign him? Well, I understood the plan. They, Dallas felt like with Dirk Nowitzki getting older, they had to oh, save that cap room for a superstar, maybe Dwight Howard or None Chris of us Paul. But really it's always basket. easy in hindsight when, when those things don't happen to say, hey, what were you doing? Holy holiday. Here we go with Holiday running Finish. it up the court. Thank you. And he takes that one up. And power 
pushes it through. And so aside from my disaster for his quarter, how to use defense play to create dead offense. Yeah, beautiful guy. transition play after the steal the all the way to the basket. I'm wasted no time going from defense to offense. Yeah, it feels like they're starting to pick up the intensity as the game itself starts to get a little more tight and close. New York calls timeout. The big story in New Orleans, guys, is the change of the name from the Hornets, a name that came with the team when they relocated from Charlotte to the brand new Pelicans. Now, Pelicans might not be the most intimidating name around the league, but it does have a nice and special connection to the city and state. And the Knicks making a change here. Amari Stoudemire is checked in for Chandler. Bargnani comes in for Carmelo Anthony. Meta World Peace, he's checked in for J.R. Smith. Hardaway is subbed in for Iman Shepard. got that shot. Udrick for three. Udrick's not a strong New York, shot. no good that time either. Bo Clark, and, and I really didn't know you knew this much about birds, but the Brown Pelican is indeed the state bird of Louisiana. Their numbers have rebounded dramatically after being hard hit by the Gulf spill. So a representation of the city's triumph, Steve, over uh, great adversity. Well, I'm happy it was something that is connected to the city. I'm talking about the name, the Pelicans, because remember, originally this team was known nice as the Jazz. Out, so that made sense. Time. Utah Jazz made no sense. <laughs> New Orleans Hornets made no sense. Sense. New Orleans Pelicans make sense, guys. <laughs> you know, the Knicks got off to a fast start, but when you employ as many old bodies as they did last year, it's hard to sustain the level of play you need over the course of a full season. Uh, it's one reason they started to falter a bit late in the year. World Peace, this I don't understand why this game makes so many double team choices. Outside it Hardaway. makes my call for any That's good. That's Udrick with the assist that time. And World Peace in the post doesn't Udrick require has got a double three assists team. now in this one. And Roberts kicks to Evans. Uh, that's not a pick. That's a pick. Yeah. Evans off the pick from Steams. The Pelicans have been coming through at the charity strip. They've made seven of their eight attempts. And the first one at the line is good. Getting to the stripe is something they've been doing a lot of in the second half. And when you're behind, I think that's a great strategy. Not only do you get easy points, but the clock stops as well. The Knicks leading by 12. The dish to Hardaway. From downtown. Outside World Peace. Back to Stoudemire. Whoops, they pick off the pass. Evans passes to Roberts. And there's the foul. It goes on Ryan Anderson. That is his first foul of the game. Tries a three off the inbound. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may. Welcome back, everyone. We're ready to get going again. Of the NBA play. on 2K Sports continues. Players are topped off with Gatorade, hydrated, and ready to get going again as well. And an important part of every team's game, a look at the hustle stats for New York. Their high energy defensive effort has paid off for them, guys, with more than a few steals over the course of the ball game. And they're also really getting out in transition and scoring some hoops in the fast break tonight. A moment now to reset the lineups back to us by Gatorade, all fueled up here for the fourth quarter. And New York looking at who they got. The guards, Ray Felton and J.R. Smith. Hello outside at the three with Amari down at power forward. And it's Bargnani in at the five down low. Leno Udrick, he's checked in for the Knicks. Evans outside. Shut up, shut up. Power down with both hands. He's very savvy in traffic. When he gets inside, has a kind of an uncanny way of shielding himself from contact and finding a way to finish at the rim. Steve, the other thing is he's that really an bad. extremely he's skilled ball handler, too. He's sure got a little flash and dash to his game, that's for sure. They're going Matching back to the three-point shot point over and over and over. That was the ninth straight point from behind the arc, Clark. It feels like they've, they're finding the holes in this defense. And he was fouled in the act of shooting. Can't you now for a three-point play. Foul. Boy, they are just destroying them in the paint. You could say that again, Steve. The defenders just aren't aggressive enough down low. Looking who's out there now for the Pelicans. Anthony Davis, he's checked in for Jason Smith. And it's Holiday in for Brian Roberts. Back to Smith. Six on the shot clock. 
Goodrick dishes to Carmelo. Now that it annoys the shit out of me because Davis jam. is stuck in a post-up animation. Well, Clark, a clear lane to the basket and the emphatic jam. And that is outstanding attacking basketball. Well, he had no choice but to take that one to the bar. I just set a pick, dude. What are you doing? Holiday up top. He's covered by Felton. Evans. And a miss there with a chance to cut the lead to single digits. Such a solid performance for them inside. Their rebounding has been terrific. Yeah, that's just one of the few things that, that have gone their way today. And the shot is good. And that's 17 points for Carmelo Anthony. He's out. flipped the script here in this half, shooting a much higher percentage from the field. Pelicans trailed by 14. Just under two and a half minutes gone here in the final quarter. Davis with a screen on Felt. And Holiday kicks to Davis. Yes, and it's Holiday with the assist that time. Holiday's got three assists tonight. New York calls timeout. You know, after losing Jeremy Lin going into last season, guys, I think some fans were concerned that the team might slip back to isolation basketball and their offense would stagnate, but instead they flourished as a three-point shooting team. And New York making a change here. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Hey, guys. Well, Mike Woodson had some advice for the team over that last break. His advice clear-cut. I want to see you playing to win, not playing not to lose. I don't care what the lead is. We do not back off. Out of bounds, New York. How is that really off on me? Uh, really? My foot kicked it? Why would he stick his leg out? What the... Takes possession. And back to the next personnel moves. You gotta give them yeah, a lot of credit going out. Game still finding has a lot shooters of shit and defenders and Steve playmakers to surround their star players with. Yeah, they ended up with Bargnani putting him at the uh, kind of a shooting four spot, adding another three point threat. Uh, the Knicks are always going to be aggressive. I, I the ball this was already a, a good team, second best record in the East, but you know they're looking to get better. And it seems like scoop layups go in with like a 90% accuracy. He's been one of their more reliable game. options today, guys. I mean, his shooting has led them to this lead. Davis setting the pick for Holiday. Knocked away. He passes to Gordon. Dishes it to Morrow. Davis. One X pull it in. Anthony's got four rebounds in this game. He has not been on his game, and you know their deficit isn't totally on him, but he has not helped the situation. Smith the pass to Carmelo, and it's Shumper penetrating. Anthony dishes to Smith. Oh, oh ridiculous! Pour it down that time. <laughs> It's not possible what we just said. Is that possible? <laughs> not is probable, it? but it is possible, partner. It, it's it possible. is possible. Holy not probable. It, it is possible. I don't know what all that meant, but you're right, Clark. Here's Aminu. Nice D from Chandler. You've got to give them a lot of credit for the job they've done on the backboard. Well, they've done a lot of things right, but I agree with you, Clark. Their rebounding is right there at the top of the list. A shot by Anthony, no good. I tell you what, folks, I bet he won't miss that shot next time he takes it. And Holiday kicks to Gordon. There's the pass to Davis. Doubled by Shumpert. Outside Holiday. Gets the three pointer to fall. A little confusion defensively. Yeah, you know what? He sent the D a little message with that three. The Knicks leading by 13. Felton goes in. Back to Smith. Passes it to Felton. New York moving it around. Shumper dishes to Smith. Pass to Felton. Outside Anthony. Again, the miss by Anthony. The Pelicans have gone five of eight shooting as we've come down the home stretch in this final quarter. Oh, come on. <laughs> Who's that pass to? I honestly don't know. Was... I guess it was to 
I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And out of bounds as the next game possession. Steams much checked in for the Pelicans. That's one of those times where I wish I used icon passing. For New so York, at least I they've knew gotten what was into going a pretty on. good groove going six and ten here in the final quarter. And the foul on Drew Holiday. That is his first foul of the game. And a new group in for the Knicks. Amari Stoudemire is checked in for Anthony. World Peace comes in for J.R. Smith. Hardaway's checked in for Shumpert. And it's Udrick in for... I didn't adjust player matchups. What? 2K has so much to work out. For Raymond Felton. Good. And the crowd here, of course, not happy about the outcome. But you know what? We saw a team tonight that came in prepared to do battle right, on the road. And they clearly wanted the win. You know, they were determined to steal this game. And they showed it, Steve. Played harder and got the job done. New York's three of their six three-pointers to fall here in the fourth. Hardaway for three. That's good. And it's Udrick with the assist that time. A serious game-clinching run. They've taken off here. Impressive. No backing off. What a surge at the right time. Here's Aminu. Plays it up and banks it in. Boy, if they could have had this kind of run earlier in the game, it might have made a big difference. You know, I think a big reason behind the run, Steve, is that they're not getting pressured as much by the defense now that the game's all but finished. Well, that puts the nail in the coffin. A clinic in terms of how to play with the... All right, I think Tim Hardaway Jr. hit more threes than the whole team. All right, overall, pretty frustrating game. Uh, Warren it wasn't able to get too much offensive continuity going. But the big problem was defensively, uh, no answer for the Knicks outside shooting. Uh, I'm going to have to turn up my the defensive pressure uh, because they were just giving way too much space to, to all their shooters. Hardaway Jr. had 16 points in five minutes of action. That's absurd. Um, and Mello... In general, we did an all right job on Mello. 19 points. You know, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, but offensive rebounds, let's check that out because those hurt a lot. Uh, we had four for Chandler, two for Amari. Obviously, offensive rebounds are something that needs to be patched in this game. We only had two offensive rebounds, so that was a pretty big factor. No blocks to three and they're pretty good at getting to the line uh, considering a third of our shots were threes actually more than a third uh, I hit the three ball pretty well but uh, the twos were, wasn't too efficient on those uh, 12 of 22. 12 of 22 on twos. That's not a great percentage. Conversely, he was 18 of 22 on two pointers. So, uh, could have done a lot better defensively. He had uh, 32 points in the paint. That's uh, 16 field goals versus my 12. So, actually, I didn't. I wasn't able to establish a mid-range game at all that game. So first quarter was obviously very ugly. Second quarter, I kind of figured things out. Uh, the third quarter was ugly for both of us. But yeah, in the fourth quarter, I, I just couldn't get any stops in that fourth quarter. And so that's what we really needed to pull out a W. I had 18 points on 7 to 10 shooting. Can't really complain too much about that. But, you know, defensively, he just won too many threes in that fourth quarter. So let's run it back because that was 
to be honest, a pretty bad example of the Pelicans. Uh, in my previous stream, uh, I think that was a lot more indicative of what they were able to do. Uh, again, haven't played in two days, so a little bit of rust in that first quarter. He told me he's a huge Ford, fan of Drew numbers, Holiday, saying, and you Davis. know, Drew's still a guy with oh, so much potential. You just don't see that many point guards with his kind of frame. Six foot four, close to two bills, and a I great skill set to match. I wish 2K was smarter, and I like how they're like, oh, the Pelicans? Watch, I obviously want to throw that. I was going to pick the Pistons, Kevin, but maybe I should pick uh, a, big a good in team now. Thanks, Doris. Well, definitely a nice sounding name. Get Other this options PZW. were the Swamp Dogs, the Bull Sharks, the Mosquitoes. Uh, you know, Steve All right, got my bye. They went <laughs> Next. The right way with the Pelicans. I don't know. My personal favorite was the Rougarou. Um, that, I don't even know what that means, but that was in the mix. Would have puzzled a lot of other people around the country besides me, but uh, better than Mosquitoes, that's for sure. Pelicans was probably the right way. That's good. And one, there's a whistle that goes on the Monchon. have right now is... That's his first foul. Uh, I like the call. I thought the defense either. was moving there. Yeah, I think he slid underneath. Good blocking call, that trip. Uh, it's like it, but... Certainly not the dream start they were hoping for, going one for four early. And so okay, sir. But what you love about Drew Holiday is... Speaking of another thing that needs to be fixed for next gen. Size at the point guard position. He's about 6'4". Uh, 2K servers are still very are young, but an all-star last year. I think he's only going to get better. Aminu with it. Now Smith oh, defending. For three, Gordon. And the rejection by Shumpert. Kind of a shaky first few minutes. Oh, uh, five field Bobcats. goal attempts, only one made. Man, a gaping hole in the Gardner defense that time, out. and he didn't waste any time getting through it. And you know, so Drew Holiday, guys, in Philly is called he's by two some with people the for the truth. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but he still has work to do. I like his talent challenge, so and his I'm demeanor. Stick with the he's real life starting as lineup. both the scorer and the playmaker, which is tough for a young player to balance those like two that. skills. There was no but I think he's got play. a chance to be special. I'm not sure who that. I, I was expecting a pick and roll when I wow, took that. Wow, and that sort of showmanship is just deflating right now to a team trying Clark to get back into this game like this. Yeah, definitely. I like how Drew Holiday has one signature skill to uh, Kevin Walker's five. How about maybe even a question mark, Mark? Well, you know what the questions are about uh, now. Actually, what I will defense. do this game, because it kind of sure. bit me in the butt in my last game, is I will adjust defensive pressure. This touch has disappeared on him this quarter. He uh, just hasn't been able to get it going. For off the ball. And here's it's Anthony bad. for it's three. Really yeah. one side off of Chandler, the pass to Felton. Out to Anthony. And the pass to Smith. Snick off back court. Outside jumper. Let's go tight. Chandler. Do not double Tyson Chandler in the post, around. computer. Took the opportunity when he sees oh. it. Felton's got his second bucket tonight. I like the offensive awareness to exploit that lack of coverage on that play. And I'll adjust later as Smith with it. Al Farouk Amino uh, as needed. Bobcats are a very Smith. weak three-point shooting team. Chandler's shot good. That's so we're going to want to pack got his first points of the night. And look at how the hustle game has been going for New York. Well, I think the defensive aggressiveness on display here has caught him off guard. Playing airtight defense and coming up with the steal. Yeah, it sure has. And uh, another area where they've been on point is defending the rim, guys. Uh, All right, get murdered through the first the two moment. quarters. Boy, they've settled into their offense very quickly here today. Yeah, they're zoned in, making the most out of their possessions here. A lot of high hopes for the Knicks in last year's playoffs. They started off so hot, but then let the series against Boston Jeez, drag man, on bad. and on, and eventually went to seven games, and they fell to the I'm Pacers. Sure why I wasn't able to get that pass. Outside jumper. Pass to Felton. Back to Jumper. He dishes it to Carmelo. Outside for Felton. J.R. Smith on the wing. And a miss there on the triple. 
And the Boston series did drag on him, you could tell. You wonder if they were a bit fatigued going into that Pacers series. Steve Indiana just outplayed him, outworked him in, in every way in the second round. Yeah, I think it was a factor, Kevin, and really the Knicks have only themselves to blame. They had Boston down 3-1 and a home game to close it out, but they couldn't get it done. And there's no doubt that that affected them against Indiana. Are they going to run the play? I, it's, Boy, what this game is ridiculous sometimes. Quarter for them. Yeah, it sure has been. Look at the lead they've jumped out to already. Impressive. And Holiday kicks to Gordon. There's a lot of broken Has plays in this game that they need to just take out. How's that for an answer? Right back with the dunk. Well, as far as the defense goes, Clark, that is not what's going to keep them in this lead. Yeah, but from the other perspective, you can right, see just how much it. that dunk pumped those players up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree, guys. I sense a, a little bit of a momentum shift here. The first quarter concludes. Right, let's try this play out. Well, not exactly a close game so far. There we go. But as I don't know why it's executing this time. time for a comeback. And uh, the Knicks guys have been rolling right along here, haven't they? And how about the defense, guys? I like that they play better really if there's controlled shooter the lane in the with their shot blocking. Yeah, excellent so let's defense. Try that. Every shot has either been altered or rejected. Here are the five New York has to start here in the second. We've got Hardaway. World Peace is out there with Bargnani. And it's Udrich, and it's Martin, and at the center, filling out the middle. Nice shot by Evans. For the New York Knicks, they come into this one following a loss to the Celtics in Boston. Get the shooter, yeah, I thought the their defense in that game was about as shaky as it could be. At home, you know, that kind of defense isn't going to cut it, never mind if you're on the road. They really look tired to me, and I don't know if they had travel issues uh, playing off or if they were out too late, but something was amiss because they had no energy. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. I wish Tyreek would stop running. Well, the court, Kevin, although Andre Bargnani is a player that had seemed to have lost a lot of value around the league, the Knicks were actually eager to acquire him this offseason, despite the money remaining on his contract. And Tyreke you can see finish. the fit. A team that loves to spread the floor and shoot threes, he can certainly do that. And gives the team another versatile scorer to complement the brilliant Carmelo Anthony. Kevin will see how it works out. Seems like a good fit. Well, we're Thanks all playing a lot better. It's a wonder another uh, another drop in the numbers from Tyreek Evans, how things are going minutes, your way. You're not playing against the, the most Knicks. efficient scoring of his career so far. A lot has been and when you're playing opponents playing off ball defense like that, season, uh, uh, things tend to open up for you. And so New York calls timeout. They're first. And for Tyreek Evans, a player who's had the ball in his hands his whole life, it's had to, you know, be a tough adjustment, learning to play off the ball. Yeah, I think that's been the big challenge. And he's not a great shooter, so players who are used to handling the ball and don't shoot particularly well, and all of a sudden it's a really Come on. big adjustment. Uh, to figure out I was that supposed to go to Gordon. Good defense. So New York ends up going with the new group. Oh, you gotta Let's be check shitting out the me. Standings in the Western Conference and see how the playoff race yes, is replay up. that, dude. Taking a look at Oklahoma City and that checking shit out New Orleans. They're tied right now. You can't be the number two seed in the East by being mediocre on the road. I mean, the Knicks had a veteran group, and they all had the mental fortitude and experience to finish off games on the road last season. Belton gets to jump out to Anthony. It's a nice passing by New York here. New York, no good that time either. What? And out of bounds as the Knicks gain possession. Oh, uh, did not think that was a mean error, but NBA. it worked out. Step away from the bucket and cool. Hit the three. Huh. You got to stop. Dangerous player from three-point land. Now, of course, I'm sure I'll miss my next uh, four it's threes. Amazing. These days, there's just so many with good actual three-point shooters. Outside shooting big men. That didn't used to be the case the in the NBA, but now the floor is spread all over the place because you've got just so like many that. I got a seven-point shooters at that four and five spot. Yeah, you make a good point there, Steve. Big guy uh, shooting the ball well. It's part and parcel of the game nice. now. When you go back a generation, there were only a fraction of big men who could knock down outside shots like we're seeing currently. And now the Knicks on now, the break. I personally can't stand people Felton who with uh, the ball. now guarded by Morrow. Felton kicks to Chandler. He's against Smith. 
Smith, so left side. Use the pause menu. Six to shoot. To sub during an the online shot game. From the low post is good. And the Knicks lead by 15. Mark, as you said, the Knicks were one of the tougher teams on the road, and their road record was, you know, what uh, separated them, Steve, from the middle of the pack in the East. Yeah, 23 road wins, second only to the Heat uh, in the East. Uh, it's interesting, Kevin. They relied so heavily on threes that I hate you know, when sometimes the ball bounces on the road, over the backboard. I've got an offensive they rebound. It's going to be so simple. Hurry, and they were able to I feel like that's the reason why the shot goes over the backboard. Because the game is realizing, oh, he's got too easy of a chance. Um, got so now we're balls. lagging for I don't know what reason. Roll is just one of the many finishing moves he has in it's his not coming from my end. Smith sets the pick for Evans. Pass to Smith. Inside. Here's Anderson. But just like that. He uh, it I missed that three because of lag. And another three for New Orleans. Orleans. Now he hits a three. He's found a rhythm He's here in this second oh, quarter. Shot. He good. And it's a two-point game. Goes in. Gets it to go. Nine points in the game so far. Those defenders look like they're out of gas. I mean, they're getting pushed around on the low block. Well, their energy is lacking. They've got to start playing harder and battle down in the paint. Lag. Evans off the pick from Smith. Evans dishes to Morrow. Kicks to Smith. Shot from 16. Rebound by Smith. And it is very dangerous to leave him open like that. Lucky break for the defense that he missed it. What's interesting for me to watch with Mike Woodson as head coach in New York attention. is the exciting floor spacing offense they started playing last season. Apparently a sequel on his shot. He's okay. been known for a grinded out isolation play style, but has actually tweaked his approach a little bit, and that's been impressive. Evans working against Vance. Oh, on. It's stolen by Amon Anderson. Jumper. And he jams it with authority. You can't trust TK. And once he took the, uh, off, it looked like the defense just had no Without interest in getting passing. in his way. That's one where you just give up the two points and move on. So frustrating. And back to Mike Woodson, not a flashier, high-maintenance type of personality. He keeps it on the level, and I think, Steve, the players appreciate that. Players definitely like that. He's uh, very quiet on the sidelines, but not afraid to get in your face when necessary. And I think that's a, a really good temperament for a coach to have. In general, I, I think he's a guy who is very well respected around the league and did an excellent job with New York a season ago. Time call here. Knicks decide to talk it over. And going against New Orleans, their first game of the NBA's regular season. Last season, they had a very easy time with this club. And, of course, being East versus West, they only got to face them twice. But I'm sure they wish they had them on the schedule more often. So, New York going with almost an entire new group. Wow. Stoudemire's checked in for Jim. it now. Don't worry. Oh, I've come comes back in for J.R. Smith. He was lucky that Hardaway wasn't a shooting foul. And it's Udrick in for Raymond Felton. One of the problems with uh, the blocks in this game is it kills a lot of your spacing. In the second quarter. Steve yep, he's playing off ball. Well, he's got a little segment there. But uh, so what we're saying is I don't really shoot tomorrow. too much mid-range is you can block wins. anything inside Probably the three-point arc. Even shots that are three on the three-point arc. First meeting, Mark, uh, this year. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, they appear to be at opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of talent. But nothing's ever a sure thing, Kevin. That's why we play the games. I like that. Good. You know, playing in London during the 2012 summer seemed to do wonders for Melo. It often does wonders for guys that play with that national team. He came back with all kinds of confidence and uh, seemed to be at another level. He's perfect from the line this time. And for Carmelo, boy, he really excels in international as he always has. Yeah, the three-point line is just a bit shorter, which kind of brings it right into his no. comfort zone. So he can play that zone really buster not a Brian in Roberts USA. Fan. And I'll tell you what, he can do so Especially many other things, team. too, because of his size and quickness. And you hear his coaches talk about his defense is better than they have. His defense is just ironic, isn't it? He's not very fast. Well, probably the right play defensively. If you can't get the block, send him to the free throw line. Don't give him an easy two. No easy buckets really, Yeah, he's really Force lumbering about and work to keep him out of the lane next time around. Good on the second free throw. We've got 13 seconds left now here on the second. Here's Hudrick. Back to Anthony. What's up a three? No good on that last second attempt there. 
And so that's the end of the first half. All right, could have been worse. Uh, we are playing the Knicks, who are an elite team in this game. This nine threes. So we're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show been so far. Worse. We'll see if that those? changes here in the third. What a game we're seeing but from Marlon. Boy, he put on a show from the three-point line the in the first half, didn't he? We'll see if the halftime break had any cooling effect on him. Yeah, we'll soon find out because I guarantee they're going to keep feeding it to him behind the arc until he does cool. Good air by Charles Henderson. Backcourt, Holiday and Gordon. Anthony Davis is out there with the Hingham. And it's uh, uh, Morrow in at the small Morrow forward position. Keep so that's guys. the group out there for New Orleans. Back to Felton. He kicks it to Smith. Outside Anthony. Back to next so feed to Chandler. Shot clock at six. It's tipped and stolen by Gordon. And keeping us updated from the sideline, let's swing it over to Doris Burke for an update. Hi, Doris. Oh, I should have let him well, throw guys, foul. Andrea Bargnani, the number one overall pick back in 2006, but he hasn't been a star caliber player in the NBA. Who's the blocking foul on? Certainly. Why is that a continuation? What the hell is wrong with this game? Ugh. That it just didn't seem like he had enough passion for the game, that it wasn't important enough to him. Some pretty harsh words, but guys, sometimes for seven footers, the game finds them. And defense and rebounding, certainly not the glamorous parts of this game. Kevin will see if he ever realizes his potential. And hope for the best. Thanks, Doris. Well, you got to help out the team whenever you can, and this group of shooting guards and have like helped this, out on uh, the glass for their respective better. teams this year. In the third spot, J.R. Smith. And these are sort of your do-it-all guys. You know, even if rebounding isn't necessarily a priority for shooting guards, it's still an important skill to have. Yeah, I agree with you. As much as you can do to help your team, you increase your value and your importance. And the guys on this list give their team a huge boost with their ability to squeeze the arm. Well, most of all, I just love the work he puts in on the offensive glass. So many of his points come on putbacks just because of sheer hustle. And Steve, very few players have his finishing ability. We see him get a lot of and ones because even if he draws hard contact, he is able to play through that and typically score. Shumpert passes to Felton. Hands it from downtown. Oh, come on. I had a beat. Get the rebound at least. Pelicans last uh, season like a were dead what the last fuck is this game? You would think with a defensive anchor like Anthony Davis inside, they'd feel more comfortable pressuring the passing lanes, but it just didn't seem to be the case for him. Chandler comes with the double team. Holiday with the three. Tyson Chandler pulls it in. Chandler's got four rebounds now tonight. Dalton kicks to Shump. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. And Clark, as you said, with the Van Hornets, now Pelicans, last in the league a year ago in steals per game. And Steve, overall, defensively, they just struggled mightily. Yeah, third worst defense in the league last year. They allowed a lot of open threes on the perimeter. Some of that is just, you know, the young team and going through the growing pains. But I think, uh, you know, with the shot blockers inside, you have to apply more pressure on the perimeter. And that's why they went out and got some of the guys they did. Terrific defense at the rim. They got right in his path. You know, that's part of what great defenders do. They get not only in your path, but in your head a little bit, too. And here's Felton from the arc. It's rebounded by New Orleans. They are coming off that win against Atlanta. And I think everybody uh, didn't stop the play. This is really so annoying. Their defense that really wanted for them. Yeah, they were all over the place, flying all over the court on deep. The kind of hustle that pays off big time for you. And the offense continues to struggle. Just one make in their five attempts. Well, guys, with the Knicks playing a space the floor, pick and roll offensive scheme, I mean, Tyson Chandler is a hand in glove fit. Pick the ball up. Come on. Inside, keeping defenses honest and then cleaning up the mess on the weak just side. Sitting board. there. Shots are missed. And it's Shumpert penetrating. Smith defended by Gordon. Oh, and here's away Anthony from for three. Yes, and it's Smith with the uh, assist. Smith's got caught in the screen animation. Smith's got three assists tonight. And Holiday kicks to Aminu. Gordon feeds to Davis. It's oh, taken lazy. away by Anthony. Entry pass. I hate when they do that. J.R. Smith on the wing. He's covered by Aminu. 
And Clark, you talked about what Chandler has meant for this Knicks team, both on the court and in the locker room. And Tick. you wonder, you know, Tick. if Dallas, Tick. Steve, had wow. to do over, do you think they would have tried harder to resign him? Well, I understood the plan. They, Dallas felt like with Kirk Nowitzki getting older, they had to oh, save that cap room for a superstar, maybe Dwight Howard or None Chris Paul. But really it's always basket. easy in hindsight when, when those things don't happen to say, hey, what were you doing? There, shot oh, adjustment by May against the shot blocker. Finish. Terry he does have acrobat. He takes that one up. Aside from my disaster first quarter, I played dead even. Yeah, beautiful guy. transition play after the steal, the all the way to the basket. <laughs> Wasted no time going my from defense to offense. It feels like they're starting to pick up the intensity as the game itself starts to get a little more tight and close. New York calls timeout. The big story in New Orleans, guys, is the change of the name. From the Hornets, a name that came with the team when they relocated from Charlotte to the brand new Pelicans. Now, Pelicans might not be the most intimidating name around the league, but it does have a nice and special connection to the city and state. And the Knicks making a change here. Amari Stoudemire is checked in for Chandler. Margnani comes in for Carmelo Anthony. Metta World Peace, he's checked in for J.R. Smith. Hardaway is subbed in for Amari Got Shumper. that shot. Udrick for three. Got start. New York, no good that time either. Well, Clark, and, and I really didn't know you knew this much about birds, but the brown pelican is indeed the state bird of Louisiana. The numbers have rebounded dramatically after being hard hit by the Gulf spill. So a representation of the city's triumph, Steve, over uh, great adversity. Well, I'm happy it was something that is connected to the city. I'm talking about the name, the pelicans, because remember, originally this team yeah, was known nice as the Jazz. Out, that that made sense. Sense. Utah Jazz made no Air sense. that. New Orleans Hornets made no sense. New Orleans Pelicans make sense, guys. <laughs> wow. All right, so Steams is definitely not a finisher. As many old bodies as they did last year, it's hard to sustain the level of play you need over the course of a full season. They're not shooting the ball particularly well. The ball to a bit late in the year. World Peace, I don't understand why this slowdown game makes it. The Pelicans have been coming through at the charity spot. They've made seven of their eight attempts. And the first one at the line is good. Getting to the stripe is something they've been doing a lot of in the second half. And when you're behind, I think that's a great strategy. Not only do you get easy points, but the clock stops as well. The Knicks lead by 12. The dish to Hardaway. From downtown. Outside World Peace. Back to Stoudemire. Whoops, they pick off the pass. Evans passes to Roberts. And there's the foul. It goes on Ryan Anderson. What? That is his first foul of the game. I was going to say, what kind of bounce pass was that? <laughs> well, for three quarters of play, down double digits, it may be.
So, if the last 30 seconds have given you any indication, I heavily dislike this game compared to 2K13. Um, we're just playing soccer and volleyball right now. Their interior defense. Davis. Yeah, and unfortunately, their offense in the paint hasn't been a whole lot better. And Kimball Walker is going to pick up a foul. That'll be his second foul. Game. Game. You know, Charlotte making the switch. Haywood's checked in. And a look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from. For the box. Oh, wow. Well, the great passing we saw in the first half has carried right over into the second. It's not possible. From beyond the arc tonight, too. I mean, a lot of their points have come from out there. You know, coming into last season, the backcourt for Charlotte was full of question marks, but after the way Kimball Walker blocked, some of the other guys were able to fill in and step up. And their backcourt looks a lot better now. Here's Walker. And that one goes right, but I agree with you. In this quarter, he's really been off the mark. He just looks a little bit unsettled. Here's Gordon. And there's the foul. It's on Josh McRuff. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. For New Orleans, they have made their free throws at a pretty good clip. They've been 8 of 10. Gets the three-pointer to fall. A little confusion defensively. Yeah, you know what? He sent the D a little message with that three. The Knicks leading by 13. And Morrow. 
Yeah, you can't expect that from him. You pretty much know what the result's going to be when he goes to the line. Feeds it to I had that right all the way. Kick out to Walker. Taylor launches it. The rebound by Whitney. Just unsettled between the clock and game clock. Stolen by Gordon. Evans with the steal. And he uses both hands to jam it in. Textbook example there. I honestly don't know. Yeah, beautiful transition play after the steal all the way to the basket. Wasted no time going too. from defense to offense. Yeah. It feels like they're starting uh, to pick know. up the intensity as the game that still starts to get a little more tight and close. That's not a sight you see very often. I mean, he has a great feel for that jump shot. When he's open. All right. Oh, I'm down nine. And the final period of the play just about to start. Defensively, and a new but definitely not out of this yet. Amari Charlotte leading by nine, and on the court for Charlotte as we start the fourth. They've got Haywood. Jeff Taylor is out there with Josh McRoberts. Then and it's Gordon in a shooting guard position. Well, this is how you complete an opponent's rhythm. What? Yeah, you know, such terrific on the defense to trigger so the transition so opportunity. And it wasn't just the tough D, it was the exclamation point they put on the fast break with the slam. The here, nice the soft the touch to drop that one in. Gordon goes in. Anderson. He feeds it to Stings. Back to Anderson. Uncovered. It's rebounded by Sherman. They're led by as many as four. That's good. They're next with the assist. The real taking up the Cavaliers, and that will conclude a four-game road trip. Phenomenal alley oop slam. They're taking advantage, Clark, of a team that looks lost. Yeah, this is threatening to get kind of ugly out here. Rivers. It's good, and he drew contact on the shot, so he will go to the line. A three-point play chance here. Well, you know, this last offseason, the Bobcats announced their intention to change the team name to the Hornets, reclaiming the name of the original Charlotte franchise for New Orleans in 2002. Here's Sessions. There's the dish to Taylor. And Sessions gets to Haywood. That's good. And the Bobcats lead by 11. And just like New Orleans chose a name, the Pelicans, that has local significance. The Hornets, a historical reference to Charlotte's rebellious fighting spirit during the American Revolution. Steve, you need to tell me about this. Fascinates me. It does. I'm an American history buff, Kevin, and I'm also an NBA history buff. Think back to the Hornets in Charlotte originally. They sold out for nine straight seasons. So the Hornets nickname absolutely belongs in Charlotte. Wow, are you kidding? The shot is good. And their field goal percentage continues to climb. They've really shot the ball well here today so far. Yeah, and it's all about quality shot selection, smart shot selection. Very patient on offense. One of the reasons they're behind is because we haven't seen enough of that. He needs to become a bigger part of the offense. Sessions dishes to McRoberts with the lead pass, and Sessions kicks off Taylor. That ball's great assist by Ramon Sessions. Sessions has got his third assist on the night. Pelicans trailed by 11. Down low. Here's Steamsma. As far as the defense goes, Clark, that is not what's going to keep them in this league. Yeah, but from the other perspective, you can see just how much that dump pumped those players up. Oh, yeah. Get yeah. Line. I sense a, a little bit of a momentum shift here. Sessions gets a screen from McRoberts. Out of bounds, New Orleans will take possession. So for the Pelicans, Anthony Davis comes in for great steams. And it's Holiday in for Austin Rivers. Third minute of action gone here in the fourth. Davis setting the pick for Holiday. Eric Gordon on the wing. Left side Davis. The kick out to Anderson. Evans defended by Taylor. What I tell you. Back to Evans. He dishes it to Davis. 
Out of bounds, Pelicans ball as New Orleans keeps possession. Now Jefferson is checked in for Yeah, I know Ryan Zeller comes in. has a 16 Roberts. rating, but he's wide open. Not loose. And it's the Bobcats on the break. Kid Gilchrist with the ball. Yeah, in the fourth quarter. I, I just put it in the Henderson, no good. Boy, they needed that last rebound. They haven't done well on the boards overall, but that one was huge. Mm -hmm. Too much fight for the win here. And Holiday kicks to Evans. Stolen by Walker. Well, as a coach, that kind of turnover just drives you nuts. And that's because it should never happen, Steve. It just should. Pretty bad example. Holy crap. It's stolen by Jefferson. Rejected by Inu. King of Hong continues. Pelicans killed by nine. The rim rattling two handed jam. Solid, solid on the back end of that play. Yeah, finished hard with two hands on the stuff. Nothing extravagant about it, but there didn't need to be. Walker gets a screen from Zeller. From deep. Evans gets the rebound. Yeah, no excuses there. Got a really good look at the basket. They're being freed up by the pick. We say it all the time. The execution was excellent. The result not as good. But good ball movement anyway. What a smooth finish. Well, he's yeah. certainly the one they want on the end of those breaks. He always finishes strong. Got any comeback going on? Bobcats call time here. They're ahead by five. One final quarter. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Over the break, I listened in on what head coach for the Bobcats was getting across in their huddle. He was probably his guys up for their defensive pressure saying listen the pressure you put on them has been fantastic I got yours, I got keep yours. pestering them keep forcing turnovers and we'll be in a great position to win this thing all right doris thanks and yeah, one in the first audio as well. problem for the last 20 minutes uh, yeah, my page refreshed and unmuted itself holiday and why and the foul on al jefferson that'll be his second foul of the game he tried to step That's in and cut him off, but just not play. quick enough. And we have the benefit of replay, but I think they got that one right, which is the case most times, even though fans don't think so. These defenders are not putting up much of a fight on the interior. It's been embarrassing. That's 10 consecutive points allowed in the lane. And that's not the kind of streak you want to have if you're playing defense. And despite the fact they've been beaten on the boards, this one is so close. Kevin, they're still in. Eric Gordon in for Tyreek Evans. 112 left here in the fourth quarter. Well, it's going to be tough for them, but you have to continue to compete. It's not over. Just play. See what happens. Yes, you can't afford empty possession. Ryan high and throwing down the hard one-hander. <laughs> One of his favorite moves right there, guys. <laughs> and he does it as well as anyone. Tremendous skill in the air. A 15-footer. Misses off the left iron. If he can improve on what's been a shaky day for him thus far, they could stretch this lead out. He drops the first one, and that shrinks the margin to just four. For the Bobcats, Jeff Taylor comes in for Gerald Henderson. And Sessions subbed in for Kemba Walker. That's got to be the, the biggest pair of free throws of the game so far, guys, because it, it turns the thing into a one-possession game. Lag, lag. Wow. Here's Sessions. Side Jefferson. And he draws body contact. Looked like a blocking foul, and he was uh, in the shooting motion. So he'll head to the free throw line. The Pelicans have to improve their approach against Jefferson. He has 11 points and a couple of nice Black steals, spike. too. Gerald Henderson, he's checked in for Charlotte. Oh. Two possession game now, guys. Some very important free throws there. Kicks it to Aminu. Is it tomorrow? 
Oh, great. He passes to Aminu. Flag. Pass to Davis. Pass to Davis. I can't bring up my pass indicator. This is bullshit. Wow. Now the feed to Davis. Had an open dunk. Passes it to Aminu. This is retarded. Wow. Really? Wow. Oh, 2K servers are awesome. All right. Do I really get the win from that? I don't know. All right. Well, um, not the greatest uh, games by me. Definitely not. Uh, I've definitely played much better in my life with the uh, Pelicans slash Hornets. So please don't let this uh, reflect your judgment on whether or not you pick them. Uh, overall, they they do have some some strengths, but a lot of weaknesses. Uh, they have a lot of guys who struggle in the half court to score, like uh, Davis and Aminu. But at the same time, they are a pretty good uh, transition team if you can get out on the break. I didn't get out on the break nearly as much as I would have liked to. Uh, the shooting's very erratic from the outside uh, and from the mid-range, especially since uh, a lot of their shooters have cold streaks for whatever reason Stats Inc. decided. Um, Eric Gordon's uh, 75 three-point definitely hurt us in a lot of uh, areas that uh, it might not have with, you know, maybe a couple extra points in his three-point. I think it's a 78 at default. Uh, Ryan Anderson, very good from three-point, but he missed both of his shots from mid-range even though he was wide open. So that's a, a point of frustration that you might have uh, when using him. He's strictly a three-point shooter. Uh, Anthony Davis had a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say a lot of good moments offensively, but he's very good at drawing fouls and finishing at the rim. Uh, it's just everything else. He's not really, he's really got a center's game. Uh, and I feel like a lot of the times when I struggled offensively is when he was at the four spot because that just overall kills your spacing. It's like you're having two centers out there on the floor. And, um, you can actually feel at times like you're playing three on five because if he's a power forward, that means one of your stiff centers is out there. Um, Steamsma is not really productive offensively. Uh, Jason Smith, uh, he's got a little bit more potential, but he didn't really do much offensively either. Defensively, uh, they're very slow, and that matters a lot more than uh, a block rating because you need to get in position to block the shot before you, you even need to worry about your block rating. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed in this game, but anybody can block a shot. It doesn't really matter what their block rating is. So, you know, that is something that... Uh, you do need to be mindful of. I would I would worry about uh, a center's offensive skills before they're defensive, uh, except for uh, rebounding and the fact that none of our centers are good defensive rebounders. Uh, that or vertical jumpers, because that is a rating that does uh, get used when calculating who grabs a rebound and who doesn't. Uh, both all our centers are. They have a very poor vertical and very poor defensive rebound rating f compared to uh, what most centers have, especially star centers. So I would definitely advise, after playing these two games, uh, a lot of minutes at center for Anthony Davis and uh, making Aminu. I think Aminu worked great at power forward and at small forward. That's when we had a lot of issues. Um, because he's just really butchering your spacing out there. So Aminu and Anderson as your power forwards. 
uh, Davis as your center with uh, Systemsma and occasionally Smith behind that. And then on the wings, you can just run with uh, Morrow, Tyreek, Gordon, uh, or Austin Rivers even. And at point guard, you still have Roberts and, uh, of course, Drew Holiday. So that's my take on the Pelicans. I'm going to try playing with them a little more. Um, and yeah, uh, they're not the only team that I'm going to be trying out, though. I will be releasing another video shortly. Uh, or not a video, but a stream, I would say, uh, discussing other team ratings. Uh, please let me know in the comments section if you want to see another uh, team. Uh, you know, what would you what would you would like my next team analyzed to be? Yeah, you can send me a message on Twitter uh, at the real two K at real two K Insider, or uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and just comment me there. So, thank you guys for listening. I uh, had a blast. I uh, don't think the uh, production value was all that good in terms of, uh, I have a bad feeling, I won't find out until I'm done, that the uh, I had some major audio issues. And yeah, I was hoping that I was done with my audio issues, but uh, if they're back, that sucks. I'm going to keep working on that, not understanding why... Uh, I would have a problem with that halfway through a video. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. That's just me rambling along. And uh, check me out next time.